All right. Hey, I'm back. Moral Gamer. Um, just finished Castlevania Curse of Darkness. And I'm, I'm at this point where uh, I want to... I want to figure out what I'm going to say on it. Because Castlevania Curse of Darkness uh, rated M for Mature, right? Yeah, yeah, rated M for Mature. Ha-ha! <laughs> um, high score games! Woohoo! Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I... Uh, they're just kind of my go-to people, but, you know, might as well give them a plug, right? I guess they're not paying me, but eh, I get deals once in a while. Any rate, though, um, so here's the thing. Here's the thing with uh, Curse of Darkness. Curse of Darkness uh, takes place after Dracula's laid out the curse from Castlevania III. Uh, curse, Dracula's Curse, you know, NES game. And the thing is, with, with this one is, is that the curse is on there. Uh, Dracula apparently had two Devil Forge Masters. Uh, these are guys who can, like, summon the spirits and stuff, and they can make their own little innocent devils, and they can use them, uh, basically as minions and whatnot. Um, so, you play as Hector, whose wife was killed, uh, burned as a witch, which is something Dracula would know a little bit about, wouldn't he? And so, basically... Basically, um, you play as Hector. He's a Devil Forge master. He kind of has forgotten his arts because he forsook Dracula. Um, in that Dracula's taken down and everything by, you know, Selfie, Grant, and, oh, Alucard, maybe. Um, it, the, the setup is a, a decent follow-up to the previous Castlevania game. But the problem I have with it right now is, is I have that, um, the problem I have with this one is that the the setup relies it relies heavily on you understanding more about what happened previously um, for you to really get into it. I mean, I, I guess I went into this having played uh, Castlevania um, Castlevania on NES. You know, I played all three of them on NES actually. Uh, had fun, great games. Um, it, it it it's it requires that to enough of a degree where I'd say you know hey. Uh, it's okay, but the story itself, it's, doesn't really, it can stand on its own, but not very well. It's part of a larger, uh, Castlevania lore, that's for sure. So, Dracula is dead, and we're trying to resurrect him, right? And so you get some interesting characters pop up. Uh, obviously Trevor Belmont's hanging around. Um, Trevor Belmont, the one who beat him at the end of Dracula's Curse, Transylvania 3, of course. And then, of course, you have, uh, Julia, she's the shopkeeper. You have Isaac, who is the other Devil Forge Master that worked for Dracula. Isaac is back guano crazy. Let's leave it at that. Uh, you get this uh, this monk and this um, this top hat guy who's always you know always walking around. And I actually thought from the beginning of the game that this guy was going to be Dracula. I'm not going to spoil it at this point, but you can if you watch the live stream, obviously. Uh, you'll know if you haven't watched the live stream, then, you know, da -da -da. you can always watch that. Either way, though, um, either way, uh, Dracula, by the way, takes many forms. If you, if you, uh, know much about him, um, he's master of illusion and dark arts and apparently science, but that's why you get cogs and stuff. So the game has, uh, its own little story and... I guess I guess the thing that bothered me about the game is is that the characters themselves are very flat. There, there's not there's not any growth to them. There's not and it, it's 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 you know I must go after Dracula. He killed my wife. I had a wife. I don't know what she saw in me. I have such a flat personality. I should care about her, but. I don't show it in any of my tones. I mean, it, it just basically is one of those things where everything is so flat with the characters, it just really ruins the story. Um, so I, I I didn't enjoy the story much. I actually I'll get to a moment here, but I got a little more to say on the game too. So if you look at if you look at story wise, it's 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 a very flat story. It's not it's not really interesting. It's not a really good. It's not a really rich Castlevania tale. Um, I mean, like, something like, and I, I'm not a big fan of Symphony of the Night, but I, I will give it props where it gets props, and when you start Symphony of the Night, Alucard is this rich character who is screwed over 
stripped of his powers, and basically it, 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 it's Dottie's angry with you, <laughs> you know. So, uh, <laughs> so it, it it is what it is, you know. Um, the as far as it goes with um with this one story is pretty flat. Uh, voice acting is worse. <laughs> the only character who has any charm is Top Hat Guy, who's like, Oh dear me, I can't believe you are hunting a vampire at this hour of the night. Oh, if you go through the mountains, maybe we can find something. Um, when they reveal his origins, uh, I don't know what I want to say about that. Uh, I, I guess, you know, cover your ears, we'll Google. Go. Cover your ears, you know, when I take my hands off my ears, you know, when I take my hands off my ears, you know, you can start listening again. So quick spoiler alert, but, but, um, Top Hat guy, basically the thing with him is, is, uh, they reveal his origins and whatnot in the end. And it's, yeah, I don't know if he's a common thread through the Castlevania games, uh, with his origins or not, but yeah, whatever. Spoilers over. Uh, so, I, I just didn't find much of it interesting. Uh, gameplay. Gameplay is always fun. Uh, the gameplay aspect, I hated this game. I hated this game. I hated this game. I hated this game! Okay. It's competent in that, you know, you, you just mash X. Just, or I think it'd be Square on PlayStation, because I know it's on both, but I played on Xbox. Uh, you just keep mashing it. Mash it, mash it, mash it. You know, that's how you beat them around with a stick. And it's a lot of hacking at first, but then you actually need to start using your rolls, your dodges, your counters, uh, stuff like that. You actually need to use those later. And uh, why, or it'd probably be triangle on PlayStation, is your is how you command your, um, your innocent devils, uh, your summons. And so... It works competent enough. Competent enough. The camera! Camera sucks! Oh my gosh! Alright. Number one. Everything is so freaking dark. Okay? Gotta turn that contrast up to 11. Ooh. I hated that. I hated that. But then on top of that... The camera sucks because it's always panning and you can't, it, it, it is, can you see anything? Can you see anything? Can you, can you? No, no, okay. You want a good camera, okay? You want a good camera. Let me move my chair. Let me move my chair, show you, show you what a good camera looks like. A good camera is about like, about like this. You can see around me, right? I know for studio recording, stuff like that, I'm a little closer so you can actually hear but they, if they pulled the camera out where you could see more of what's going on to the sides and everything, it, you would have had more lateral control. You would have felt like you had more command over your character. And you would have felt more like you could prepare for what's coming at you. Um, with it so tight in, you couldn't see anything. Couple that with the fact that the whole world is dark. I mean, it's dark. And when you get the rosary power up, like every time you beat an, an enemy, you'd randomly drop a rosary, it just look like a cross. But uh, it just phew, flash light and everything will get bright. And you can say, whoa, they actually put detail in this world. But you can't even enjoy the surroundings because it's so freaking dark that you just can't see anything. Oh my gosh. If you're, gonna, if you're going to make a game, if you're going to make a game... And, and you're going to do it in such a way where, hey, you, you're going to take the time to actually make it look good and everything. Make it look good. Give us the ability to enjoy it. I mean, come on, Castlevania. Come on, Konami. Get with it. So the camera made the game very difficult to play. It was too far in. It, it didn't spin the right, it's the right way at all times. And it, it didn't catch up. So if an enemy's running circles like a Fenrir, little wolf guys running circles around you it even when you're locked onto him it didn't always keep up with him and so you're getting jacked by enemies you can't see you just can't see and then the world is so tight everything about it's so tight you're just when you spin the camera if you try to get it up or if you're too close to a wall it stops turning it's like, <laughs> okay okay 
I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it! Because it made the game so difficult to play, I don't have to put this on hard. I just, I just fool around with the camera and I'm going nuts! Alright, I know this has been a rant about the camera. Let me try and move on to the next thing. Competency-wise, I mean, the, the game plays as well as it should. Uh, I wish you didn't have to invert to get left equal left, right equal right. Uh, they have that backwards. Um, uh, it means like turning a tripod, basically. You know, if I if I push to the left on the tripod, the tripod turns the camera right. You know, versus uh, what you're normally used to in video games. If you pull right, you know, if you pull right, you go right. If you pull left, you go left. Or I guess I guess for you guys, it'd be like you know, right to right, left to left. You know, but backwards for me. But anyway, because I'm facing you. But yeah, so frustration there um but overall oh, competent enough uh item management okay they had this forging system okay uh they had a forging system where basically every enemy you beat will have a chance of dropping materials and if you gather up enough materials you can actually uh build weapons new swords new axes um claws my claw look like vega you know stuff like that um <laughs> I've been watching too much YouTube. At any rate, uh, you, you can you can build new weapons. I thought that was a cool system. There are some special weapons, but they're not really worth it. Like you get a baseball bat or a spike shield. Spike shield doesn't do anything for you defense wise. It re really didn't. I mean, I was hoping defend. Pink enemies come up it. They're just hurting themselves against the shield. I hope for that. Nothing happened. You know, the bat's like hey. You know, so there are, there are other, like, silly weapons and stuff you can get. Uh, it's just a matter of forging the right stuff, but wasn't really worth it. Innocent Devils. Devil man, 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 man. You know, they're like little Pokemon guys. You can get five, you can get five of them, five types that you can carry at once. Um, I guess he doesn't have enough room on his belt for him, but whatever. You get a fairy type. Fairy type is your healing class. It's going to heal you. It's going to recover status effects and stuff like that. You get a golem type. He's just an all-out brawler. He goes nuts. He's your juggernaut. Pounds on everything. Knocks him over. Um, being a big brute, he actually got in my way at times. Because when I wanted an enemy uh, to be closer to me, he'd just come in. Shoulder chuck him. They go flying. And I'm like, now I got to go chase him. Then he, crap, I wanted to push him that way, you pushed him that way, you're an idiot, golem. So that's, that's how it just worked for me, that I found he just, with his brute force and everything, got in the way. Uh, as he got larger, and especially in the in the final fight, I, I used the fact that he gets this, um, when you level him up, and all of the innocent devils, they basically have multiple forms, depending on what weapons you use when you're leveling them. And I leveled mine up in the right way, where he was a liquid golem near the end. Uh, mercury golem, something like that. But he gets this ability where he turns into a puddle, and he's invincible during this time, and he flies around the room. What's nice about this is, is that enemies will track him instead of me, and it helps in the later areas, where the bosses are just doing massive AoE effects. And you can sneak up behind them and start jacking them while they're following the golem. Uh, let me think here. Um, oh, you have a little birdie. Turns into a pterodactyl. Kind of cool. Uh, the bird's okay. It's more that, um, each of the innocent devils has a, a special ability. The fairy helps you open chests. The golem helps you open large doors. The, uh, bird can fly you over chasms. And the, um, the wizard. Wizard's next. He can stop time, which doesn't work on bosses. Um... Wizard was okay. He also helps you. By the way, super hint for you guys. If you have the wizard and you come across blood skeletons, you have to use the wizard uh, in its... Um, oh, gosh. I, I forget what the form is, but you have to use the sword all the way through to level him. Once you get to that point, he gets the purify ability. And the purify ability allows you to purify a red uh, blood skeleton, red skeleton. I forget what they're called. Um, but basically, then that, that'll let you actually beat them once and for all. Uh, let me think here. What else I want to say? Um, oh, and then your and then your uh, devil devil. It's kind of redundant. 
Uh, he's just a little demon-looking guy. He looks like the Gargoyle from uh, Gargoyle's Quest. And he just goes nuts, pounds on him. His special ability for you is he can turn you into a puddle and slide under things. Under fences and other stuff. So it, it, it's limited use. He's not really useful. If you want a character that's just going to go up ah, and spaz out, attacking everything that moves, great. But he's not very focused. There's not much you can command him, so whatever. Uh, Innocent Devil System was okay. I, I think I think from a game that I actually enjoyed more, Alyssa Dragoon, uh, where you got you know four different uh, creatures that you could command. You'd have to level them up just like you do in Castlevania. I think that was better because it felt like... Um, it all, you didn't have control over any of them, but each of them was useful in different scenarios. In this game, uh, I, I found that I found that um, at times they got in your way in ways you didn't want them to. Like I said, uh, when, when, when the golem is knocking them around and you don't want them to, that, that got annoying. So there, there were times where it's just like these innocent devils were not useful, and there were times where it's like you're just surrounded by enemies and you need someone... Uh, that can plow through them for you or do stuff to help you out in fights because you, you're wrestling with the camera, you know? Uh, fun factor... Nah, this this was a chore for me to get through, okay? I, I, I beat the game because I wanted to be able to say uh, that I, I want to be able to say that I completed it before I actually did a review. Um, it was torture. It really was torture. It wasn't that much fun. It, it felt like a lot of redundancy. Um... A lot of times, if you watch the live stream, I got frustrated, and I just like, because I'm, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with the cameras, and I'm dealing with all, all my complaints that I've had before. I'm dealing with them, and it just, it wasn't as fun. Um, so yeah, the fun factor really wasn't there for me. Uh, I probably should probably mention some of the parental objectionable stuff, you know, as we have in the past. And it's, it's a vampire. You, you, you're going after a vampire. You're a devil for master, so you're kind of doing a little bit of necromancy, and you're doing a little bit of summoning spirits, familiar stuff like that, sorcery. You got issues with that stuff. Obviously, you're not going to want your kid playing it. Uh, fighting demons, monsters, things like that. Vampire. Vampire, not vampires. Um, other people practicing. Even death at some point shows up. So, uh, again things you don't like kids playing with it you might not want this one on your in your library or even in, at hand uh, I don't remember there being any language uh, and oh, I didn't get to see the harpies it's one of the things about being dark you can't really see your enemies uh, but so I can't say there's much sexualization in it that I was aware of uh, but overall though I mean it's just oh blood lots of blood uh, it, it's not a horrible game. Um, it's not a horrible game, but again, you can have games that are, are completely uh, like the like the Bible Challenge. You can have a game that is completely family friendly, uh, but at the same point in time, it's just not a good game. Um, this one's not really family friendly. Um, it's not horrible. It's not anything you wouldn't see on like a PG thirteen movie. Um, but at the same point in time, it's, I, I don't know why it got an M rating. It, it really should have been rated T. Um, I, what, what is it rated M for? Rated M for blood and violence. Lots of hacking enemies up with stuff, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, family friendly stuff. Um, I don't see anything here. I wouldn't let my kids watch, but at the same point in time, I mean, like I said, it was, it was a horrible game, uh, fun wise. So I really, I really don't see much. Uh, let's see here. What's, what's the last thing I could comment on? Bottom line, the bottom line here, Castlevania Curse of Darkness, uh, really with its, with it being so dark, you can't really see much. You can't enjoy the world they created. It's it, and a very dry story. Horrible, horrible voice acting. Oh my gosh. Everyone was so flat. Um, it wasn't a good game. It really... I, I, I Castlevania, the 2D ones. Okay? I, I've played the first five. I've played the first five. Maybe six. I don't know. If, no. Okay. So I've played the first seven Castlevanias. So we're talking the original, Simon's Quest, Dracula's Curse, Super Castlevania. We're talking... Uh, oh gosh, what was the one? 
Um, I have it on Genesis too. Bloodlines. I've played Symphony of the Night. I've played Dracula X. All of them. There was a pacing to it, a good pattern to it. There were games that you just, as you were pushing forward, you got more excited. What am I going to see? What am I going to see? In this one, I felt more like, how much longer? How much longer? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? So I did not like this game. I would two thumbs down on this one. I I can't recommend it. Bottom line, Curse of Darkness was really a curse for me. So I, I have my level of frustration with it. Um, yeah, but that's that's my review on it. Uh, if you're watching live, uh, you just saw me beat Dracula. That's that's the gameplay. Um, yeah, Mall Gamer. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Support links below to help me out. I am probably gonna take the next week off. I've got some, I got some stuff coming up, and I just I just want to refresh, especially after oh, horrible game. But next time I'll be returning with something I want to play. And when I say I want to play, I mean I wanted to play this at first, but then it got to a point where it's like I gave it a chance and I just dreaded finishing it, but I wanted to say I finished it. So something I want to play. By the way, no Madden Project uh, this Monday. Um, I Like I said, I just need to I take a break every once in a while. Just cleanse. Cleanse. Which is nice. All right. Love, peace, chicken grease. Catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.